So, UV mapping. Before we start, um, let me just quickly, um, I hope that that uh, connection holds. Uh, let me just quickly hide the ground here because we need, don't need to see that right now. And we can actually um, hide our controllers for now because we also don't need to see them. And I pretty much freaking hate how large our joints are displayed. I could make them smaller, but I'm just gonna hide joints here for now. And I'm just also gonna hide IK handles because that's big. Mm. Since I'm working in meters here, which pretty much is a standard in the VFX industry, except maybe for characters, where centimeter just does make some sense, but honestly, uh, most things tend to work in meters and all dynamic setups or actually even in Maya, even though the default unit is called centimeters, they, honestly, it's meters really. So, um, I don't know how you can screw that up, but, um, that's just the way it is. So, um, yeah, and I've just noticed that the canopy is not really fully closed, so it's a bit windy in the cockpit. So let me just do that right now. So yeah, things are fine. Um, let me turn off the grid here. Right, we don't need to see the grid. So um, the UV layout, um, there's quite a bit of stuff maybe to talk about. So let me just open the UV editor here and hope that, yeah, for whatever reason, that window tends to sometimes be undocked it sometimes likes to appear on your second monitor uh, for reasons. I don't know why. If that happens, take a look at the second monitor. If you have one, it might be there somewhere. So, um, other than that, this UV editor is pretty much the thing. I don't know any other application that, except for dedicated UV tools, um, and there are a lot of them out there, but they all have their pros and cons. And honestly, since you want to keep a lot of the things associated with your meshes in Maya, if that's your pipeline hub, you usually don't want to just export everything to something else. Do you, if you remapping there, lose all your, your asset tags and whatever and things and re-imported and whatever. So Maya, since a few years, since basically since they redid the layout of this UV editor, which could be still improved, but it is cool, um, has some of the best UV tools on the market. It's not certainly not the fastest in terms of auto mapping and layout, uh, but um, you can work in this pretty straightforward. So since uh, UV mapping, a lot of people find it a tedious process. Uh, a lot of times I actually find it, find it quite relaxing, at least after a long modeling session, to do some UV layout because in the end it's just um, unfolding your mesh like a paper model and um, it doesn't require that much brain, so you can just put some music on and do it. And actually the, the feeling of having a finished UV layout is, is quite satisfying. So if I just select uh, that main group here, um, you can see everything there is on this asset. So the very first thing you might notice, if you know about the concept, is that these are UDIM tiles. So basically, uh, the way I decided to do it, and, and the way you usually do it on production nowadays anyway, and you all, all <laughs> always did actually, uh, it just wasn't really called UDIM and you had to use a little bit of tricks to use multiple textures for multiple UV tiles. Uh, but yeah, the way I decided to lay out this UV, uh, UVs is uh, something that is called a UDIM layout. Most of you will already know this, but I will explain it a little bit later in more detail. Um, the thing to note here is that not all parts of this mesh are part of the same UDIM texture. So in the end, the, the cockpit and some of the stuff here, well, actually those two UV tiles don't even have any textures because they're procedurally shaded, but the cockpit and especially the instrument panels certainly have. Um, they are not part of the same UDIM layout as the um, as the uh, fuselage, but um, I have moved them up here because uh, honestly, um, if you just select an asset 
and you have a lot of overlapping UVs, uh, which is okay if they don't share the same texture, um, things are just messy. And for, for, for reasons, uh, I do like to have assets set up in a way that if I select the main group or uh, the asset master, I can see everything uh, in a nice layouted way, even though I could move all of these um, um, these parts up here a row down. So they would overlap with the fuselage uh, UV maps, but since they do not share a texture, that wouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, but the thing would be a jumbled mess. So let me just save that here quickly. So to explain what I mean. So if I had this texture thing right here, uh, this cockpit texture thing right here and I'm gonna select all of the UVs and if I didn't have them up here um, but oh that's uh, I wanted to move it by one tile so mm, get back there Maya I usually have to set up on one but this is a different machine than I usually use so it's pretty much at default so let me move that down a row so as you can see and I'm gonna deselect this and then hope uh, that I can do undo. Let me just quickly check that here before before continuing because um, sometimes on Windows, and don't ask me why that happens, uh, when Maya crashes, um, Maya decides to turn off the undo queue for some whatever stupid reason. I don't know uh, why you would ever do that, but it happens. Where is it again? It's somewhere here. Undo. Uh, so it's on and it's infinite. That's nice. That's how I like to work. So yeah, um, if you ever experienced an error or, or if you had a crash and you, um, you, uh, uh, manage to remember it because usually I don't look at the window after a crash, but you should actually. Uh, sometimes Maya decides to turn this off. So you can't use uh, Control Z, which is annoying, especially if you uh, find out after having worked half an hour in a file and you want to, yeah, well, undo a few things that you maybe did because you wanted to try out something and you can't, you have to reload your assets. So, uh, some one of these little quirks. So I, I don't definitely. I, I I wouldn't use Maya if I wasn't of the opinion that for a lot of things, um, uh, it's actually um, one of the most efficient uh, app applications out there, and obviously is it's an industry standard. But um, there are some things that are just really, 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 really not that great. So um, that's one of the things that might happen to you. So be careful about that. But that doesn't have much to do with UV unmapping other than if uh, you have a large number of objects right here. And um, well, this is manageable. This is really real time here, more or less. Um, if you have a larger number of objects and you move things about in, in the UV editor, uh, it seldomly does, but it kind of can crash. So uh, that's that's how I uh, kind of like uh, yeah uh, had the thought of checking that undo queue. So whatever. Um, if you had it this way, and I just select my master as right here, um, you can see the those three UV tiles really are a jumbled mess. So those UVs are overlapping. And as I said, if they don't share a texture, it's not really a problem. And that's how you usually would work because if that, um, so, so this thing right here, so right here, this, uh, thing is a one UV tile. So that's the UV space between UV zero and one. Um, if they don't share a texture and this thing would usually be at UV zero one, because that's your texture space. But in the end, if you move the cockpit up, that doesn't matter anyway, because textures are tiled by default. You can turn it off, but textures are tiled. So if I move the whole cockpit thingy up here, it will still get the very same texture. Um, it's in another tile, but since the, the map that you're loading is already tiling, this will be exactly the same as if it was down here. So um, since this is a mess and I would to, to see things clearly, I would have to spend some time to select things that I want to see, and as you can see, that looks quite a, uh, that looks quite okay. But in the end, if I wanted to select the cockpit or the whole asset, I would have some mess. So 
let me try to undo moving the UVs. So let's see how much undo steps I have to take to do that. There's nothing more to undo, so that should have reset the thing not. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of told you so. So let me try that again. So maybe, no. Okay, so it was in the end quite not wise to save the thing before doing the thing. So let me just reload the file and I'll be back in a second because I need to drink something. So we are back and let me just quickly check uh, the UV editor here which looks, should look pretty much the same as it did before we did our little UV uh, experiment right there. So um, thinking about the, the thing that just happened. So in my desire to show you, and I'm going to tell you this, normally I'd, I'd cut those parts out from a tutorial because it just uh, kind of like complicates things. But in the end, this is a workflow tutorial and the workflow uh, means knowing your software and all of its little issues. And because I'm in front of Maya right now, I'm talking of course about Maya, but they, they all have these issues. So Houdini pretty much never annoys me that much, but uh, Cinema 4D drives me insane for various reasons. Uh, don't let me get started on Blender. Um, but in the end, they all do their job quite well nowadays. So it's often just a matter of personal preference or in the end, um, kind of like uh, whose bucks you'd rather take. So um, in my desire, to show you what happens when Maya crashes. I push that little button and obviously from a UX standpoint, that should mean that from now on, I want to turn off the undo queue. So keep the things that are there, but turn it off for now because I don't want to undo the next steps for whatever reason. So there's a reason you can turn that undo queue off. So if there are some heavy, heavy operations and you don't want things to pile up in memory on your undo stack, there's a reason you could turn, turn it off. Unfortunately, obviously, and that is something I just learned because obviously I ne never did that um, at runtime while I was working on something. So that's something I've learned after using the thing for 15 years. If you push that button to off, Maya will obviously clear the whole undo queue. And if you turn it back on again, you basically have a clean slate and you can't undo anything you did uh, before pressing that button. So yeah, that shouldn't be that way, obviously, because nothing here tells you that that's a thing that will happen. But yeah, that's the thing. So. That's something new for me as well. It's good to know. And those little things are things you have to keep in mind when working with any application, really. They all have their little issues and they were kind of like little kids that you have to uh, take care of. So um, that's also the reason why you end up, and, and that is true for every application out there, whether it's 3ds Max, Blender, Cinema 4D, uh, Houdini, um, Whatever, uh, things that don't exist anymore, true space, light wave, it still exists. Um, save your files often, save versions. Whenever you're about to do a step that you might have a feeling about that it might go wrong, save it because you'll be sorry later if you didn't. So as a workflow tutorial, and <laughs> again, a little tangent, but I'm sorry that that happened, but it happened. Um, so um, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Uh, Keep that in mind. Um, there are certainly tools that have a better unused system um, than Maya, uh, pretty much all of them. But um, in the end, as I said, again, uh, I'm talking mostly about Maya because I'm on Maya. Uh, it still holds true uh, when talking about UVs. This is cool stuff. Um, this works usually without problems if you don't get sidetracked. So. Um, let us get back into the whole thing and let us start again uh, with talking about the UVs. So hopefully you remember everything I told you about before um, before the little undo accident. Uh, anyway, um, 
let's talk about UVs. So before continuing, uh, talking about the UVs of this plane, um, I might, for those of you that, you that are really uh, quite new to 3D in general, and maybe want to go into texturing uh, or pretty much you know, nowadays, pretty much for everything you can do in CG, you will have to do a UV layout of something sooner or later. You can uh, get away without them if you're just using procedural textures, but really you never do. So um, <clears throat> unwrapping, at least on a very basic level, is kind of like a thing that you definitely need to do whether you want to or not. So, uh, as I've talked about these concepts of tiles and texture space and UDIMs uh, um, right now, uh, I should make that clearer uh, by showing you a little example um, how you, um, well, what, what it all actually means to better understand uh, why I did the things here. So this is gonna be a quick run through because I don't have the time to explain uh, UV mapping uh, in this overview video, but um, let me just move that over here and um, I'll keep that because I might want to show something else in that file on the Mac. So the Mac is gonna open the world infamous second Maya instance, which hasn't crashed yet during uh, the recording. So that's nice. So, uh, Maya, there you are. Enter and come on. So, so let me just build something really quickly to just show the general concept of uh, UV mapping, UV tiles, tiling textures and all of that. So I'm just gonna take a plane here and let me move those faces up and I'm just gonna create a new polygon right here. So that's gonna be a thing that we will be texturing. Let me move that down here and we don't need that. So yeah, like that and a multi-cut so we can smooth the whole thing. Uh, however, um, that's, that's the thing that we want to texture. And if I take a look at the UV editor, um, and hopefully that works, um, there are its textures. And as you can see, that, that doesn't really make, make much sense. So let me just to show some things, smooth this once. So basically we started off with a plane and we can still see that plane here. But I then started to add new faces and then they have been added somewhere. So basically that's just a complete mess. So if you're just using a polygon plane, it has a default uh, UV layout. Um, that of course is pretty simple and it works. So if I create a cube that also has a default UV layout that is quite okay. And you can see that all these uh, UV um, layouts are here within the UV zero to one space. So let me just turn on, uh, turn on the checkerboard right here and I'm gonna scale that a little bit down because it's just confusing that it actually shows the checkerboard on the second UV tile. So this checkerboard thing is just something like a control object. So if you're mapping your texture onto your mesh, you basically want to keep um, the aspect ratio of everything on your texture. So if I have little squares here in my texture, I do want my texture on the mesh to not be stretched and to also be little squares instead of stretch rectangles or something like that. For example, if I took that cube and just scaled it on this axis, I would see, let me just dock that here so things become way more easy to see, um, that thing would have a stretched texture. I, for some reasons I might want to have it that way, but you usually don't. So if I undo that, which works, <laughs> um, you can um, you can see that this is a pretty good layout. So you wouldn't use, it's not a good layout in the sense that you're actually losing parts of your texture. So if you have a square texture file, some 2K 
by 2K image or 4096 by 4096 pixels or something like that. So 4K or 8K. So pretty much 8K is the highest resolution of texture you usually use. You can go up to 16K, you, you, you can go higher. But usually if you start to have textures that are larger than 8K, um, this whole concept of UDIMS that I mentioned pretty, comes pretty much in, in ha handy. So mm, that's just the default layout um, on this cube. So whenever I modify that cube, Maya will keep the UV layout. That's just what's in, it's been created with. But I've moved an, moved an edge. So basically moving an edge screwed up the whole UV out layout of that face because this, this topology has changed. So in the end, after having modeled, even if I started with a simple cube, my UV layout will have basically nothing to do with um, with what, what I've done here. So I need to unwrap that. Unwrapping just means I need to take this, uh, this shape and maybe cut it up, reproject some things and basically lay out its faces within this two-dimensional UV space in a way that then maybe can go in later, for example, in Photoshop and just paint on it so that my texture that I painted basically lands on the mesh where I wanted it to be. So, and it doesn't depend, uh, it doesn't matter if you're using Photoshop or, or Mari or any three, 3D uh, painting package really. Um, the UV layout has to follow some certain rules. And as I said, I'm not going to go deep into UVs because that would require a whole set of tutorials and you'll learn that along the way. But um, <clears throat> to show the general concepts of this, uh, let me just create a new UV layout for that thing. So I'm just going to do a planar mapping from the top here. And as you can see, that basically projected my texture through the Y axis down onto the mesh. So those faces at the top here are pretty much mapped perfectly. Along this way right here, the texture, because from the front, this is a curved surface, slowly starts to stretch. So these uh, actual squares um, in this UV layout are now a little bit stretched. It doesn't isn't really obvious uh, here and you could use that texture, um, but the front doesn't work. So the front, since we've been projecting from the top down, basically just gets one pixel row. So the texture on the front doesn't look good in any way. What can I do about that? So I would cut, come in here and maybe say, ah, cut, cut, cut along this line. So this will not cut mm, your actual mesh or anything. Those, this, is, this is still a connected polygon shell. So basically you haven't made two meshes or something from that, but a UV shell is basically a, basically a connected set of faces within the UV layout. So that means that I can select this part here now because I've cut, cut it and it has no connection in this 2D space to um, the actual thing. So I can take that and I can move that off somewhere else. So here you can see this, this texture stretching I was talking about. So basically it's just a line because it was projected top down. So I can't texture that. So I probably have to go in here and say, yeah, well, let's, which axis is this? It's it, X. So let's project that along the X axis. So I'm basically projecting these faces, but only those faces, not those on the top from the front. So now they're projected in a better way. So let me move them up here. We don't care for them right now. Um, so this is basically a simple UV layout. Now, normally uh, you would take those two pieces move them somewhere close together, scale that whole thing down. So if you're using one texture, this texture will exist in the zero to one UV space. So basically all of your faces, if you're just using one textures, have to be contained within that space. So wherever there is this checkerboard uh, currently will be your texture later. So if I want to have one texture for these things, I basically have to move them there. We're not going to do that right now. So in fact, we don't care for this front piece right, right now. So I'm going to look at the whole thing this way. So you do not get confused. And I'm going to do one other thing here. Mm, and that is, where is my, see, that's what I was talking about. Um, this little widow just popped up on the other 
monitor. So I'm going to dock that here. It should be docked to UV data really, but well, it works for now. So I can go in here and just say rotate it twice by 90 degree and these little tools here are really, really handy. And why is this set to 0 0.5? I probably want this on one later. So I've basically just rotated this part in UV space. And now if I look from this direction, um, the, the font here, which is just a little helper, um, helper text to show me which direction my texture is going, uh, will be the right side up uh, if I'm looking from this direction. And for some reason, that's how I want it to be. So this is my thing. I'm actually going to save the thing because you never know. UV example E01. So, uh, and this is going to get messy. Speaking of windows now, um, let us make this go away. Uh, so you can see as soon as I close the UV editor, um, this this preview of this um, checkerboard is gonna gonna hide itself because I don't need to see that if I'm not working on the UVs, um, because it's just a helpful tool to check if your UVs are layout to to in a meaningful 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 way. So let me just quickly delete the history here because all those UV edits you did are still here and the extrudes I did. And uh, way back to this original poly uh, plane that I created. So I don't need that anymore. I'm not going to change any of that. So history is going to be forgotten and it's gone. So mm, I'm just going to assign a new Arnold standard surface. It doesn't matter which kind of shader you assign really. But basically Arnold is the renderer you will probably use if you have Maya uh, or a another render engine like Octane or Redshift or whatever, you'd use their shaders. But since uh, Arnold is pretty much my st standard renderer, um, I'm going to use an Arnold shader because I like them. So, um, but it doesn't render for the viewport. So let's say I have prepared a texture on my hard drive. And what I did here is just create a file texture node on this color input of the material. So I'm going to go to Udem example. I'm not going to use the Udem example, but I'm going to use the example no Udem JPEG actually. Uh, I'm going to use the copy. So um, while we were ranting about software before, there's this really screwed up bug with Photoshop on macOS Catalina right at, at the moment where I prepared this texture in, in, in Photoshop, obviously. Uh, I saved it out as a JPEG and then I added this little border here. So that's the old one, it's a new one. Uh, right now, if you want to override a JPEG file on your hard drive from Photoshop, um, it will ask you if it should override that file and you click that. Yes, and it does not override that file, it just still creates a copy. So. If you're used to overriding files, which I of course do all the time, because I usually will save out my textures as an EXR file or a JPEG file if I don't care for, for, for the color really or for its color space. If I'm not on projection, I'm not going to use ACCG or something like that. So I usually, for private projects, it's totally fine to just use JPEGs as your texture. Um, you can't. It's annoying. It's freaking annoying. So. I've just loaded the, this texture. I'm gonna live with the fact that we now have to use the copy. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, that's the way it is. So I'm gonna press six. And as you can see, the texture tells us, and it's uh, actually a bit sad because it's not, it's not a UDIM texture. So this is not meant to be used as a UDIM texture. Um, but what can we see? Um, if we use that texture. So this is my UV layout. The very first thing you will notice, and let me turn that off here for a moment. This texture only exists in the zero to one range. If I move about here, you can see that this texture, or maybe you can guess, that this texture is in some way also present in the next tile right here, because obviously this thing here, does get the texture also. So that means that its texture seems to be repeated somewhere. And it, it actually is. So um, if I go in here and this texture node um, has a 
UV coordinates input. And let me just quickly open the um, the hypershade here because why not? Uh, more windows. And let me just graft it for a moment here. So that's basically what it looks like as represented as nodes. So that just makes the flow a little bit clearer, but I'm gonna close that again because we don't need to work with nodes for, for such a simple thing. So basically that's the surface shader. That's the thing that's doing the coloring on your surface and the shading really. And this is the texture. This thing is just the thing where I'm loading the thing from the hot thing drive. Uh, this thing here is the place texture node. This basically tells the texture where to put it on the model. So this is basically telling it where to put it in, in this UV space. So uh, as I said, I'm going to run through that because that's really just, there's a lot to say about UVs, but um, I got it kind of like cut it short. So um, let's say I'm going to go to repeat UVs two times. You can see that this thing, I can actually tile that thing my, myself. So now this texture is basically in both dimensions repeated two times. So it's there are four times. And so it is also on this little thing here because this is repeated in all directions. In fact, this whole UV space, which technically is not unlimited, but for all intents and purposes, it's an infinite uh, uh, two dimensional space, this will be everywhere, this texture. So what does it mean? Let me put that back to one and make that even more clear. If I take all my UVs, and I'm gonna scale that up. So this this layout is gonna cover more than one UV tile. I will see that now my texture repeats. And for some some things, I can actually use this to to have repeating things and do some other things with that. So you would use that actually, or if I scale that smaller, on only a, a portion of the texture is gonna be displayed. If I move that down here. Only this portion that lands on, on the surface is going to be displayed. So things are tiling. So um, I can make it so that it doesn't tile. So um, what am I going to do? Let's say I'm just going to mm, say that this texture will not be tiling. So let's wrap you and wrap we. You can see somehow suddenly the texture is only one time on the mesh. Everything else is gray now because there's no texture. So I can scale this UV layout itself up. So this texture is going to get smaller or larger again. So um, if this is not what I want, but I want this outside area to be darker, for example, I can use something that is called the default color right here. I can turn it down to black and now everything is black. I can put that default color on red and everything will be red. You suddenly use it that way, but it's just to show the concept. So what if I wanted to do another texture for all those parts that are currently not covered by this I'm not a UDIM texture? Well, I can put something else into the default color. So I can go in here, say I want to load another file node. This will be basically the very same thing that we just had here. And I can say, I want to, oh, I have to rename that because for some reason that's wrong. Anyway, let's say we are gonna use one of our UDIM examples, just, just as an example. This is not UDIM what I'm doing right now, but let's, let us do that do that and you will see it put this texture basically into the background and this other texture is repeating so if i turn it off it will be directly underneath my other texture so i can offset this thing in one dimension or better said i can translate this in one dimension so it's going to move off to the side one uv um, unit basically so this way, I could arrange textures uh, on a mesh that covers more than one UV tile. This is how things were done long before UDIM was a thing, and it's pretty tedious to set up. But 
that's basically the history of UDIM and basically any other tiling format that there is um, because let us take a look at the following let's say I want this texture to cover my whole thing but I want this thing to have another texture I just did that this texture only exists in the UV 0 to 1 range this thing which I've moved off to the side to the next UV tile so this is basically 0 to 1 space this is the, the tile next to it so it's on another tile and gets another texture so to have things set up that way I would now have to um, also again map the default color of that texture to put another texture there and so on and so on and so on we don't want to do that so let me just quickly get rid of the default color here again and you will see uh, of the texture in the default color and you will see that this thing is just colored gray again so problematic we're now going to switch to Udem and I have to correct that little little texture error I had naming error I had there so let me just quickly do that so let's replace this thing with a Udem texture so I've prepared three Udem tiles one two three these are named the same so this is called example texture so every single one of these is called example texture but they have a different numbering so it's 1001 1002 1003 so basically this is saying that the 1001 tile is this one so this is gonna land here this red texture this blue texture is gonna be in this tile this green texture is gonna be in that tile so let me just open the 1001 and we will not see anything. Why? Well, the reason is we haven't told Meyer that this is a UDIM layout. So we will now change that to UDIM Mari. And there's something Meyer has to do if, if you use UDIM texture, because those are multiple textures, Maya has to generate a preview for the texture so that we can see that in the viewport. So there's this little red button here, or you can do that up here in the viewport to O settings, uh, regenerate all UV tile preview textures. So I'm just going to use that red button and magically that happened and worked. So this thing is going to get the blue thing and if I move that over to the third tile it is gonna get this texture so that is basically how you lay out UVs into different tiles the reason for that is you may want to keep the texture size of each individual texture below a limit of 8k or 4k maybe it's easier to paint textures if you have different parts Maybe it's easier to paint the texture um, if this is, for example, something like this is just off a ship, just wooden floors. This is all the metal surfaces or whatever. You could basically decide on whatever you want. Usually, UDIM tiles or UV, UV mapping is done by just trying to put things into um, into tiles as efficiently as possible while also kind of... Re keeping a or keeping it in a way that it makes sense so if i take a look at the plane it makes sense to put all the fuselage parts close to each other because probably i'm gonna paint them directly one after the other so maybe if we take a look at that you can see which part is which. So basically up here in the 01 tile is this part of the fuselage. Because I'm using an 8K texture, I basically wanted to have the full 8K resolution for half of the fuselage. Because in the end, if I have the other half down here, that means that I basically have 16K across, um, across the whole length of the plane because the plane is longer than its high, I can actually manage to put the whole 
side, uh, left side of the fuselage into one tire. So the right side is basically the very same layer, layout, just mirrored in the next tile. So if I wanted to fit the wings in here, I can't because I either have them really small or I had, had to scale the whole fuselage down, which in return means if I want to keep my texture resolution at 8K, the whole texture resolution available for the whole fuselage is gonna be less. And I don't want that because I need the detail in the texture. So you could, for a distance shot, you could get away with a 4K texture, but usually for such things, you're working with 8K uh, textures, 16K textures. As I said, you seldomly go above 16K, you seldomly actually go above 8K because just to keep things manageable. Because um, you can just use more tiles and uh, that's usually more easier to do and more efficient than to use large 16K textures. So as you can see, tile uh, three and four are the wings, tile five is the tail section and some parts of the rotor. Uh, the next tile is the gear assembly and the uh, again, the next tile is basically the interior of, um, of, uh, of the tail. Uh, wheel well. So that's how you lay out stuff using UDIMS and it all comes down to this basic concept. I could also have one mesh stretch this whole area but you'd never do that uh, because well, there's actually not that much of a problem at the at the at the border here, but you usually never do that because usually you split objects into smaller parts and try to unwrap them. Um, if I turn back on this um, this texture, uh, this this checkerboard view, and I scale this UV layout in this dimension, you can see that the uh, that the squares are starting to scratch and this is something I usually do not want because well looking at that font let's say I had that font and I actually do have a font in my texture which also will look screwed up now let us turn that off because I can just use that um, your font will now be stretched so for something like a label or something like that that will be bad you don't don't want that. So if you if I wanted to apply that font as a label on on this thing on this shape, uh, I don't want it stretchy. Now in this case, I could just you know, scale it up again. There's this other concept, and this is the last one for for this overview. Um, there's this other concept of uh, basically um, unfolding or optimizing the space that this UV layout uses. So let me turn that back on. Um, optimizing means that you try to keep this, um, this two-dimensional layout um, basically in relation to the actual 3D layout of your surface so that the te texture does not stretch. So if I click unfold right here, you will see that basically Maya relaxed my texture. It also rotated it a little bit, which isn't that bad. Uh, isn't isn't that much of a problem? Can just rotate that back. Not much of a problem. Can actually also align it to um, to some borders here or something like that. So there's a lot of tools that will automate it, that process. But in this case, I just can just rotate it manually. So as you can see everything will be back to squares. And what Maya actually also did, which wasn't the case before, uh, it basically, if this was the layout before, it basically pushed that edge out a little bit. And this one, and this one, to get rid of the stretching that was happening in the texture. So unfolding does not always give you a texture that um, is easy to paint on, at least not if you're painting in a 2D application like Photoshop. It doesn't really matter that much if you're painting in 3D space with, uh, with Mari or anything like that. But um, yeah, so this is basically how you approach UV mapping. And if I close that down right now, because we don't need that anymore, um, This is basically the base of what I did for the plane. So 
basically this this tile that I was talking about is one zero zero one one zero zero two one zero zero three things. So it's basically like a like an image sequence of an exported movie. But it does not mean that those are individual frames that are played in sequence one after another, but rather that they are textures that are put into space, into UV space, one after the other. So usually that goes up to nine, and uh, if it's at nine, it we're gonna start a second row, which is this one. Um, but as I said, those those textures right here, those this cockpit texture and this, this thing, because they use another texture. So if this texture for the fusel fuselage is called fuselage, uh, 1001, 1002, up to maybe 1009. This texture that is used, used by the cockpit is maybe just cockpit panels dot JPEG. So this texture mm, is a different texture. It's not part of the UDIM layout. So this texture will also be tiling. So as you've seen before, as I've moved this little example shape up here, it's still got the same texture. So basically I'm using the fact that the textures are also tiling uh, to be able to, to move this, um, this whole layout one tile up so it doesn't intersect with this one. Although technically that's not a problem because as I said, they are not the same texture. It just looks messy. And so this is the kind of layout I decided on. And uh, the other thing that is quite important, um, and I can do that with the preview here right now, uh, if I really wanted to, but I'd have to select the hierarchy down. Then Maya would display the, and this is going to take some time actually, Maya would display the checkerboard pattern. Uh, so I can check if my texture is stretching somewhere because I want want to avoid that stretching. So this is unfortunately always a little bit slow for multiple surfaces. So we we're, we're gonna do another thing because it's just as easy. I'm just gonna. And this is why I'm working in in this file right now and not on our example file for. Uh, for shading, let me just assign, and just for whatever reason, let me just assign one of the old Maya blind shaders. Um, so this is just gray. Let me hide uh, hide our controllers here right now. So what I'm gonna do is basically the same as Maya does in the UV editor as a preview. I'm gonna assign a new procedural texture. So this is basically generating. Um, a checkerboard pattern and I can go in here and say to this pattern you're gonna be re repeating a hundred by a hundred times so if we move closer you can see that basically uh, apart from the canopy but this is glass material so I really don't texture it you could if there are a bit of stains or something like that but chances are high you don't need that much much resolution and Basically, I put this canopy somewhere a little bit smaller than it should have been because basically it doesn't have to take that much space in my UV layout because it's not going to be textured anyway because it's glass material. So this is the only thing that basically kind of like has larger squares than everything else. So if we look at that, uh, we can see that the UV layout is pretty much consistent over the whole airplane. Of course, there are a little bit of variations of um, of the size of the squares, especially here, there's some pinching. You can do that differently, but honestly, uh, since the front of this propeller was also going to be textured procedurally, and there's not really that much actual texture going on, it's just a single color, plus, plus a few noises and dirt and, and stuff like that, I preferred that layout to another kind of layout that would have given me unstretched, um, unstretched uh, squares, but it's just, it's not that nice in the UV editor to look at. So I decided I'd keep that that way because it's not a problem in this case. Um, everything else is pretty much, um, pretty much unwrapped in a way that the texture is the same size everywhere. And to keep it that way and to not lose resolution, basically this whole thing 
uses five UDIM tiles to be able to load at maximum five UDIM textures, which are each 8K. The last tile, the interior of the gear well, um, I just put it there because if you start unwrapping things, you should unwrap everything or put things that you don't want to unwrap somewhere in a little tiny corner of your UV layout. Um, this is procedurally textured really because uh, honestly you can't even see in there unless there'd be a light shining right through there so it would basically just happen if uh, if that plane is uh, on its back and the sun is shining in there but still um, this would be incomplete if I hadn't modeled the interior so I, I did but shaded it but you will probably never ever really see much more than just such a little corner of that but still it's unwrapped um, this thing is not perfectly unwrapped so uh, for for this area I just use some simple planar projections and, and something like that so there are some uh, UVs overlapping here because honestly this is procedurally textured and I don't have to bake those textures down which means basically taking your procedurally generated texture and then baking out a pixel map of that which in turn corresponds to the UV layout of your object and this in return map back to your object again. I knew I didn't want to do that so to not spend more time on the UV layout because you spend some time really giving this a good layout. Um, uh, I didn't need to do more work uh, than was needed. On production you would usually make sure um, so there is this thing if I just select that again there is this thing of overlapping UVs which you usually want to avoid so if I moved that uh, down here those UVs would be overlapping. You don't want to have that because you can't texture it. But basically these two areas would get the same texture pixels. That's not much of a problem if you want things to share a texture as a shortcut. Uh, for the propellers, for example, I, I originally had them laid out uh, in a way that they were all side by side. And I would usually do that and just repeat the texture because they basically have the same color and the same little uh, little sticker at the front here um, yeah I assigned a different material so that's not gonna work right now so let me get back before to before I assigned that shader please let me do that Maya then let's see if we're lucky with undo uh, yes wonderful so let's take a look at that. Let me just make that a little bit brighter right here, or maybe even brighter, brighter. So let's, that's that. Mm. Let me select this. Let me actually select the whole plane. So you can see that this prop blade is getting a little sticker here in the middle. And there's also some uh, information uh, about the this, this propeller blade. So... You can see that they all, because I have selected uh, this here, uh, you can basically see that they all share a UV space. If I take one of them and move them off to the side, you can, can see that it's not going to get the texture anymore. Uh, let me turn off that here for a moment. You will see that it's not getting the texture anymore. Let me turn it down a little bit. Mm, so it's not getting the texture anymore. Why? Because all of these propellers were overlapping because just I just wanted to paint this texture once and then have them reuse that part of the texture. Because really, from a normal distance, uh, th those information on those prop blades are different for each blade, actually. But honestly, uh, I didn't care and you don't see it. Um, but normally, and, and, on, and on production, because you want to avoid those overlapping things. And as I said, I had it this way before, it just was too lazy to change the texture, and so I just moved them overlapping to each other again. Um, you would have them each on their separate tile, and if you've painted this little sticker texture with information, you would then just take that part of the texture and duplicate it over here and here and here so that it don't share the space. Why do you not want to share uh, UV space? Well, um, there's this concept on production. Um, 
if you shade things procedurally, or there are certain things in production that you can do where you're generating a texture on your mesh. So you're basically going in there, you do something of it, and you tell your 3D software to bake it down into a texture. Uh, for example, a let's say you've created a procedural dirt map. So a lot of noise and some edge dirt or something like that using a curvature shader. So this is all going to be calculated in real time in your rendering engine. So that, that takes some time. So usually it's probably more efficient, not always, but it is usually more efficient to just load a texture from, from disk that has the same information. You, so you would tell your renderer, please calculate all of this procedural shading, give me the pixel values, and then write me out a texture that stores the pixel values that you've calculated in this UV layout. If those prop blades are overlapping, the renderer will not know which information from which prop blade to write into this texture because they all share the same space, so it basically has to randomly decide which color information is going to land on that texture pixel. That problem doesn't exist if none of these things are overlapping. So that's why you usually make sure that none of these things are overlapping. But there are reasons to actually also share a texture. So this is really kind of depending on the project. There's no general rule. The general rule is nothing uh, should overlap. The other general rule is if overlapping totally makes sense, you totally use overlapping. So, but as a general thing, uh, no overlap. So that's basically where you start. You say that nah, nothing can overlap. But then you can go back and say, well, it actually makes sense if I let this overlap because I can reuse that. And uh, that's the way you do it. Another word about UV mapping, maybe. If I had this propeller, or maybe this plane wouldn't have one propeller blade or, or four propeller blades really, but let's say 26. If I duplicate objects, and while modeling, you usually just want to model. You don't want to spend any time texturing or, or uh, UV mapping, really. But um, so you have modeled this prop blade and you want to reuse it. Or another kind of little small detail. Let's say that this plane had uh, 20 of these exhaust ports because it's a future plane, future steampunk mega plane. Um, you would do the UV layout for this thing usually before duplicating it. So usually there are ways that you can transfer if you, if they are exact copies of one another and you do the UV layout for this thing, there are ways to transfer these UV information so that they, they all have the same layout to these meshes. But usually you'd rather before duplicating them you do the whole UV layout for this thing, and let's say that's the thing, you're happy with that, and then you're gonna start duplicating that thing. And I'm not talking about instances here, but rather about real duplicated objects um, that you might want to mod also modify later. You would duplicate that thing. Uh, let me just turn on uh, default material here so we can see that a little bit there. So you have duplicated the thing and of course by duplicating it that didn't change the UV layout so they are all overlapping. So you would go in here and say okay I've duplicated the thing everything you now need need to do is just move this thing over to this side and uh, you basically have two of these. I don't want to go back in here and do an unwrap for both of them. So as a general rule, you do UVs after modeling, but there are reasons why you would do some UV while modeling. And, and the way I'd usually do that, so just as an example, mm, I'd usually have them because if you take a look at this whole layout here, they are small. But if I had just modeled them, I'd probably unwrap them in much the same way. But I would have them spanning over one full tile. And I wouldn't use the UV 0 to 1 range because there will be other things there. Pretty much everything that there is in the scene will have some default UVs in the 0 to 1 range. I would have them somewhere off there in another tile. So there. 
let's let's delete that one here so there so I have this this is spanning one tile this is easy to work with so let's say I duplicated this object moved it off to the side um, I can just take those UVs right here and where is the thing gone again there it is hello pretty small this time so I can just go in here and there's this move option box and really I have set that to one as a default I don't know why it's reset but yeah that also happens sometimes um, I can just go in here and say move it one tile over and just press this button and just move one tile over so I have them let's say I have to duplicate that a third time and let's say I'm duplicating my original well there it is so I know I have another one here well move that over two times so I've got three of these things they're not overlapping that's efficient so now my whole layout is somewhere here so this plain thing is uh, is there so now I'm gonna go in and let's say I want to have these three things and it takes some time with a lot of meshes if they're not combined to sometimes select these but it uh, just chokes a little bit and then it works uh, quite nicely so let's take them and then I would go in and move them over somewhere where there's enough space in my UV layout so in this case let's say ah, I know I haven't used these things before uh, I haven't used this texture tile before but I'm gonna paint the texture for it now uh, I can put them there there's enough space there's basically half of the texture is unused if I were to texture these things uh, that's a good place for them so there they are so in general it makes sense to do all of your UV unwrapping after those things would have stayed right down there uh, during 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 the rest of the modeling so I can go in there select them easily and then just at the end put them somewhere so that's basically how you go about uh, so this the general thoughts about UV mapping as I said there's a lot a lot lots 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 of functions that you can use to make your UV layout um, and I'm not gonna go into them but this should give you a general idea how, how I approach this plane and let me just delete these ridiculous things here and in fact let's move from the Mac to the win and let's continue with our exploration of the shading of the P51 asset.